when I think of science fiction and storytelling embedded within it, often it's not just allegory for the challenges that we face in everyday life. At its best, it's that, yes. But for me, they also represent dream states of a future that if we try hard enough, that we can make happen. Star Trek isn't just a film. It's a mirror reflecting how we dream of our own future. When Star Trek debuted in 1966, humanity had not yet set foot on the moon. But on screen, 23rd century humans were already bending space-time, teleporting across the galaxy, and meeting alien civilizations. Many dismissed it as fiction. But half a century later, we're making calls on communicators, using tablets, and talking to artificial intelligence, things that once existed only aboard the Starship Enterprise. And if so much imagination has already become reality, where does the real limit lie? In the laws of physics or in our own imagination? The mid-1960s was a world simmering with tension. Two superpowers were locked in a missile race, and science had become more of a weapon than a dream. The conversation was about power, not understanding. And then, into this atmosphere, a small show was born, Star Trek. Aboard the Enterprise, people of all races, nations, and beliefs flew among the stars together. They carried not weapons, but curiosity. They journeyed not to conquer the cosmos, but to explore it. For audiences at the time, this wasn't just a fantasy. It was a future worth believing in, one where science was used to connect people, not divide them. What made Star Trek special wasn't its technology, but its attitude. It showed that imagination doesn't oppose science. It guides it. When an idea is powerful enough, sooner or later, it finds a way to become real. And so, from the small details in the show, automatic doors, flip phones, tablet computers, video calls, we began to build them into our world. Not because we wanted to imitate a show, but because it had planted a simple belief. If we can imagine it, we can find a way to build it. But as more fiction turned into fact, a new question emerged. Are there any limits humanity cannot cross? Automatic doors just need sensors. Phones just need radio waves. But faster than light travel, teleportation, these ideas no longer belong to engineers. They challenge the very foundations of physics. And then, while people were still debating whether a warp drive was even plausible, something fascinating happened. Modern physics began to suggest that, in theory, it might not be impossible. Einstein said that nothing with mass can travel through space faster than light, but he never said that space itself has to stay still. If you can't outrun the speed of light, why not let space do the moving for you? It sounds like a paradox, but this is where imagination and physics shake hands. It poses a new question. If space-time can stretch, bend, and even fold, could we travel further without ever moving faster? That question, seemingly small, yet the seed of all future discovery, opened a new chapter in our understanding. A chapter on the warp drive, where the line between science and fiction begins to dissolve, and imagination once again pushes physics one step closer to the stars. When we hear faster than light travel, we think of hitting the accelerator. But warp isn't about speed, it's about space. Imagine the universe as a giant sheet of fabric. Everything, planets, stars, starships, is resting on this fabric. To get from point A to point B, you'd normally have to travel across it at high speed. But warp drive thinks differently. Instead of accelerating, it bends the fabric itself, pulling point B closer to point A. In this vision, the ship never breaks the light speed barrier, because within its own local bubble of space, it's not moving faster than light at all. Space-time is compressed in front of it and expanded behind it, like a bubble riding a wave through the cosmos. And inside that bubble, time, space, and all the familiar laws of physics operate just as they always do. It sounds like poetry, but the fascinating part is, the math allows it. Within the equations of general relativity, physicists found a solution that describes the exact shape of this warp bubble. The name attached to it is the Alcabierre Drive. It's a theoretical model that allows a ship to travel light years by simply warping the space-time around it. 
But like all great dreams, this one comes with a steep price. To maintain a stable warp bubble, you need something called exotic matter with negative energy density, a form of matter no one has ever seen, with properties that defy every law we know. It doesn't exist in any lab, and if it does exist, it might only appear in fleeting, fragile, and microscopic quantum phenomena. So for now, the warp drive is a piece of music still waiting for an instrument. The equations are written, but the universe hasn't yet provided the materials, and that is precisely what makes the idea so compelling. It sits on the boundary between reality and a dream. Real enough that physics cannot disprove it. Dream enough to remind us that countless secrets remain unwritten in laws we thought were complete. If a warp drive could truly bend space-time, the next thing we would need is energy. A staggering amount of it, more than all our current technology combined, and perhaps more than Earth itself could ever provide. And this is where a concept appears like a flash of lightning, antimatter. In the universe, every particle of matter has a mirror image twin, with the exact same mass but an opposite charge. When these two mirrors touch, they don't collide. They annihilate, leaving behind pure energy. Their entire mass is released, with no residue, no smoke, just light. One gram of antimatter holds enough energy to power an entire city for years. It sounds like science fiction, but antimatter is real. We've created it in our labs. The problem isn't making it, it's containing it. The instant an antiparticle touches normal matter, both are destroyed in a burst of energy. To exist, it needs an invisible bottle, a container with no walls and no lid, just magnetic and electric fields suspending the antiparticles in a perfect vacuum, preventing them from touching anything at all. Today, scientists have succeeded in trapping a few antiatoms, smaller than a speck of dust, for mere seconds. It's long enough to study, but nowhere near enough for fuel. We've learned how to hold lightning in our hands, but not yet how to light up the sky. Even so, antimatter represents one of humanity's purest ambitions, to harness the power of the universe without destroying it. It proves that we understand exactly how energy works, but that we are still far too young to control it safely. And as we stand before this paradox, a mountain of energy we cannot yet climb, another idea begins to surface. Is there a way to cross the distance not with energy, but with information? Because if warp is the dream of moving faster than light, teleportation is the dream of arriving without ever moving at all. On screen, teleportation looks simple. A body dematerializes into light, then rematerializes somewhere else. With the push of a button, a person disappears here and reappears there. But seen through the lens of physics, this idea opens one of the deepest questions science has ever faced. Can reality be perfectly copied? To teleport someone, you would need to know the exact state of every single atom in their body, its position, velocity, energy, spin, everything. But according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, you can never know both the precise position and the precise momentum of a particle at the same time. The very act of observing it changes it. This means the moment you scan a person to capture the perfect data, you've already destroyed the very system you intended to copy. So, if you reconstructed a person from imperfect data, would that person truly be the original, or just another version, identical in appearance, but with no memory of the journey? A living copy, but one without the consciousness of having been taken apart. It sounds like a philosophical question, but it strikes at the heart of quantum physics. Can the information of the universe be duplicated without loss? And if you are just a structure of information, an arrangement of particles, energy, and memories, then where is the line between the real you and a copy? Many scientists believe the only way to teleport without violating these laws is not to copy anything at all. Instead of deconstructing a body and sending the data, you could bend space-time itself, creating a shortcut, a temporary pathway between two points. A person wouldn't be broken down. They would step whole through a different kind of spatial door. This is a familiar concept in theoretical physics, a wormhole. But wormholes require conditions even more audacious than a warp drive, negative energy, reversed gravity, and a stable space-time structure far beyond any technology we can conceive. So for now, at least, teleportation remains on the other side of reality's door, 
where the laws of the universe have yet to reveal all their secrets. And yet, the strangest thing in all of these endeavors isn't the technology, but how we see reality itself. With every step forward, science reveals that the universe isn't simply a machine, but a web of possibilities, where things only truly exist when they are observed. And if reality depends on the observer, then every human discovery, no matter how small, becomes a part of that cosmos. We aren't just studying the world, we are making it more real with every new understanding. Perhaps that is the most beautiful nature of science, not to conquer, but to coexist with the unknown. Every physical limit, every principle of uncertainty isn't an end. It's an invitation to keep going, armed with bigger questions. Perhaps in this universe, every great journey begins with the same thing, a question. We asked, can we bend space-time? Can we hold lightning in our hands? Can reality be copied? And somehow, each question brought us closer to the unknown. The future isn't somewhere out there, waiting for us. It's being written, moment by moment, in labs, in our imaginations, and in the very instant we dare to question what we once believed was certain. Because in an infinite universe, the greatest miracle isn't the stars themselves, it's that we have never stopped trying to understand them. If you also believe that limits are only temporary, then stay with us as we continue to explore the next chapter. Wormholes, the secret doorways of space-time. Because sometimes, to find the future, you just have to be brave enough to step through a door that's never been opened before.